Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a episode of Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. One of my favorite types of videos to do because I love talking about discontinued fragrances. My scent of the day is a discontinued fragrance and we have a surprise unboxing. Uh, so I'm in a little bit of a peppy mood today, mostly because um, this box, I don't even remember what I ordered. I think that's how you know you have a problem, but I literally have no clue what's in here. I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, actually, you know what? I may have just remembered, uh, but let's open it up. Let's see what what's what. Let's do the surprise unboxing, and then we'll do Ramsey's ramblings on discontinued fragrances. So, unboxing knife. Um, here we go. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I think I... Uh, I think I may have just remembered what this is. Ah. Ah. I think it's a discontinued fragrance, actually. Go figure. It is. It is a discontinued fragrance. It's Boss Spirit. Uh, which, if you watch my... Uh, if you go watch my... Um, review. I actually did a review of this, or I wouldn't call it a review. I would call it more of an early impression. Um, I did it off of a mini because uh, these are very hard to find, and if it wasn't for the kindness of someone in the Fragcom, I wouldn't have a bottle. They actually approached me and said, hey man, I've got a bottle. I won't, you know, charge you crazy eBay prices for it if you want it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on top of that... He was kind enough to throw in a free bottle uh, of from a brand that he said, I think you'll really like. Um, and here it is. Here's the free bottle. So let's open this up. Oh. All right, let me cut the tape off. Ah, oh, the tape took the, uh, the tape is taking the, uh, design off, unfortunately. Ah, uh, it's okay. Okay. At least it arrived safe and sound, so here she is. Um, this is, um, Beaufort's... Uh, which one is this? Sorry, it doesn't say on the... Um, doesn't say on the on the bottle. Hang on, let me look it up and I'll tell you which one it is. Because I kind of remember, it's on the tip of my tongue. But um, it is not coming to me right away. One second. Uh, it is Beaufort... Beaufort, B-E-A-U-F-O-R-T, Beaufort, Iron Duke. Yes, this is Iron Duke. So the reason that he sent this to me is he said, hey man, this is um, leathery, it's spicy, um, there's a, a whiskey note, um, there's animalic notes that go with the leather, there's metallic notes, there's tobacco, there's everything that I think you'll like in a fragrance, and honestly, it's too much for me. Uh, he said, I think that you should have it. I'm going to throw it in to the package I'm sending you. And I said, absolutely. I don't own any Beaufort fragrances. I did um, sample one. I have a video on, on Rake and Ruin. That's an insane fragrance. So their fragrances are very challenging, and... Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I liked Amouage, is their fragrances were challenging back in the day. And as far as Boss uh, Spirit goes, here's the bottle. Uh, go watch my review if you are not familiar with Boss Spirit. Uh, you can see the short ingredient list right there. The love of all um, frag heads, short ingredient lists. And um, here she is. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. How lucky am I to have this? Thank you very much. I know you sold this to me well below market value. I know you could have really jacked the price up, um, but you didn't. That was very kind of you. Very, very kind of you, mate. 
So, Boss Spirit. Uh, lovely, lovely find for me. Um, probably rounds out my Boss collection because my favorite Boss, Hugo Boss fragrances were the first three. Um, Hugo Boss number one from 85. Boss Sport from like 86 or 87. And then this from the late 80s. I think 88 or 89. Oh, wow. It's just this green... Um, you know, it's extremely green opening, but what's amazing is it almost settles down to this really, um, fantastic leather with brightness to it. There's a lot of brightness to Boss Spirit. So even though it's very green, there's no sweetness in this fragrance. Modern modern fragrance wearers who wear these sugar bombs would hate this because this is completely unsweet. Um, but, uh... Man, I absolutely loved it, and uh, I am so chuffed to have a bottle. Euro, Euro Koss, um, made in Germany. Amazing. I am over the moon to have this bottle. Thank you, my friend. Um, great find for me. And the Beaufort is just an amazing addition. Can't wait to talk about Iron Duke. So... All right, there's the uh, unboxing. What a joy that was. Can't wait to talk about both of those. I already did a, a review on Boss Spirit, but um, uh, Beaufort's um, Iron Duke will come very soon. I'm going to wear that as soon as I can, probably once the weather turns just a bit. So, um, let us get into Ramsey's ramblings on discontinued fragrances. And... Um, Today, I've got a handful. Usually what I do with these videos is I just pick a handful of um, fragrances that I haven't talked about yet on these particular videos, on this group of videos. So you may have seen these fragrances from other videos on my channel, Scent of the Day, just, you know, talking about them on streams with people like Rich Mitch or Eugene or whatever it may be. Um, or just, you know, when an idea strikes me and I talk about something from another video, that kind of thing will happen. Uh, but none of these fragrances have been featured on Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances. So that's one of the beauties of this list it, or this video episode idea is you can go to my watch list, my playlist, and you can click on the Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances and watch all, I think this is number eight now, and none of them overlap. They're all completely different fragrances, okay? Uh, now, in fact, one of them is I, I started a new video idea, and I'll talk to you about it on the very first fragrance that's officially from this video, but I want to do Scent of the Day first. Um, so let's knock out Scent of the Day, and then I'll tell you the story on the very first fragrance because it's a weird one. So uh, the first uh, Scent of the Day, or my Scent of the Day today, let's say, is going to be Antaeus Sport. So I've now worn this twice in a week. I wore it on Sunday. Um, today was Jersey Day at work, by the way. Um, and so I said, you know what? I wore this uh, when I wore my jersey for the game on Sunday. I'm going to wear it again. I, and I love it so much that it just fit perfect. Oh, fuck. There's very few fragrances that just make me just, you know... Um, almost lose my uh, my ability to speak when I smell it. And this is one of them. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Probably this in Koros uh, and maybe Chanel's Queer de Russie are the only fragrances that can challenge Bellamy for the top spot in my collection, in my opinion. Maybe Boss number one, but um, those are those are kind of the... Uh, big five the way that I look at it that right now in my head challenge boss number one for the for the top spot um, And I absolutely love Antea sport. It's impossible to find most people don't even know there was a sport version of this because Chanel made a drastic error one of the only Well, not one of the only because they also made a big mistake when they poured a bunch of money into uh, They spent something like 50 million dollars wasted 50 million dollars marketing uh, Bois Noir, which turned into Ego East. So they soft launched Bois Noir. Uh, this is back before, you know, they had focus groups and stuff like that. And um, one of Jacques Polge's biggest financial mistakes was, um, you know, pushing forward Bois Noir into Ego East, even though it didn't sell very well. Now, today, 
it's loved in the community. I, I really like Ego East. I think it's one of the best sandalwood fragrances. Although, um, part of me really likes Bois de Zio, maybe even just a, a little bit more because I have the vintage EDT and I re that sand that sandalwood in Bois de Zio is just stunning. Uh, and you know, you can kind of see bits and pieces of Bois de Zio, but you can also see bits and pieces of cocoa in Ego East. And, um, you know, now today we obviously are very glad to have it, but as far as a financial decision for Chanel, it was a disaster. They lost a ton of money on Ego East. Uh, and I think they made a huge mistake giving up on Antea Sport. Uh, thank God I have this bottle, uh, because it is damn near impossible to find. And, um, I am in love with this scent. I mean, you know, some fragrances when you open up your fragrance bureau to decide what to wear, there are very few fragrances that pop into my head almost every single time. And when it's hot, I like to wear this in the warmer weather, which in Texas is like nine months of the year. This could easily be a signature scent for me. I could wear this nine months out of the year. I wouldn't wear it in the cold because I wear Antaeus. Um, but, oh God, I mean... I wish you could smell the castorium emanating from my hand. They removed the myrrh. And so it, it's almost like taking a cloth with Windex and wiping a dirty mirror or a dirty window. And you can then see through this clear, you know, Antaeus is kind of hazy because it's got this resinous myrrh. Antaeus Sport is just piercingly um, visible. The myrrh is just, or I'm sorry, the uh, castorium is piercingly visible. You know what I mean? Like, like um, it, it's just blinding your eyes. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's animalic. It is so 80s. I wore it to work today. Oh, God. It is, I mean, um, Chanel made a huge mistake, I think, getting rid of this. The only time I can ever remember Chanel launching a fragrance and then completely just giving up on it after a year or two. Like, they didn't give this any chance to, to thrive or survive. They just completely gave up on it. I wish they would have hung on to this longer. Because I think this is a amazing fragrance. I mean, this is um, one of the best Chanel's I've ever smelled. I know that's a stretch, but I'm, I'm telling you. If you've ever smelled the um, sport cologne version of Antaeus... You'll know what I mean, especially for when you want to wear something animalic, but in the heat. Um, this just does it for me. My favorite sport fragrance of all time. Okay, enough about that. This already made one of the uh, episodes of Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrance. So, the first fragrance on this list is going to be a shocker to you because I did a video on um, five fragrances that are vintage, so 2000 and before. Uh, and I did a video on five fragrances that are vintage fragrances, but are still good and available to purchase in their modern formulations. And then literally a day or two, or maybe three or four days later, Rich Mitch and I did a live stream and I pulled this fragrance back up because I was going to talk about some of the fragrances that I talked about previously on, on that video. And it said it was discontinued. And I went, what? It was just available because I go off of Parfumo. So I either A, missed it, or B, they literally updated the website a day or two after I did that video. Uh, and the fragrance, so it's now on the discontinued list. So if you've been following my channel, this is something you've heard about. I will tell you, even though it's not technically available anymore, according to Parfumo.net, you can still go to fragrancebuy.ca or any of those discounter sites and find 100 mil bottles of this for about $20. Get it while you can if it's one that you're interested in. It's Animal, Animal for Men. So I will warn you, this house did something weird here because they initially issued in the early 90s a fragrance called Animal for Men. It's just one animal. Animal, Animal for Men is a completely separate fragrance. If you buy the original Animal for Men, you'll be like, what the hell is Ramsey talking about? This is not a gourmand. This smells nothing like... Thierry Mugler's Amen. Um, this smells very, very similar to the old bottles of Thierry Mugler Amen. Uh, it doesn't have the tar note, but it does have the honey, pineapple, lavender, patchouli, 
rose, tobacco, vanilla. It's a little bit more sweet, just a little bit more sweet. Um, there's galbanum in here. It's green, jasmine, lemon, cedar, ylang ylang. I mean, so many notes, so many gourmand, beautiful gourmand. I don't like sweet fragrances. You guys know that. I love this stuff. I love Amen though. And what's funny is this doesn't get any recognition. This came out a year or two before Amen. Uh, Amen gets credited as this amazing masculine gourmand, and it is, but this deserves more love. Now that it's discontinued too, um, I would say grab a bottle. There's a ton of stock out there because I think Parlux was just a brand that just kind of did their thing. They released their fragrances. They didn't, you know, they, they just released their 100, 200,000 bottles a year, and that's that, however many they made. Um, and so there's probably stock out there. Um, but get it while you can before the scalpers buy up stock and try to get the prices up. Uh, animal, animal for men. Amazing for the colder weather coming up. Okay, so that's the oddball that was in my five fragrances that are still being, um, you know, produced in modern form that are still good, that are considered vintage. That came out in 1994. Now it shows discontinued, according to uh, Parfumo, which is what I go off of. Okay, next we're going to go to one of the classics. Uh, the fragrance that is um, given the credit or reputation for being the first uh, designer oud fragrance. And again, this is something you've seen on my channel. You haven't seen it in, this, in these videos yet. And it's YSL's M7. And you can see I've got a tester with no cap. Uh, there is the ingredient list on the back. It literally just says... Bergamot, agarwood, vetiver, and amber, and that's it. Uh, they did re-release this in a version called M7 Oud Absolute, which is different. It's reformulated. I still think that's a good perfume, uh, but this is better for me. And the reason that I like this better is because the opening, you get more of that cola vibe. Um, you know, it'll remind you a little bit of Roja's uh, Enigma, or Creation E, Por Homme. Uh, and... Oh, I love this stuff. Um, cannot wait to wear it. I've been waiting for the weather to cool to wear it. Um, and even though you could argue that this is not some, you know, technological marvel, it's not groundbreaking, it's it's nothing new, uh, other than the fact that there's an oud accord, which for us in 2022 is, I mean, <laughs> you know, now in 2022, the oud abounds. There's oud everywhere. Back then, of course, there wasn't. Oud was a new thing for people. Uh, some people say Balenciaga Por Homme had an oud accord. Uh, that's an argument for another day. But uh, the original M7 with the off-centered atomizer is, um, you know, it is worth a sniff if you've never smelled it. If you can, you know, I wouldn't pay big money for this. But if you can find a bottle or partial or whatever it is, if you can find a bottle for a couple hundred bucks, I, I think it's worth it. But don't go pay four, five, six hundred dollars for this. It's definitely not worth it then. Okay, next on the list um, is going to be a 2014 release that was created by master perfumer Olivier Cresp, who Olivier Cresp actually created the uh, Angel. Thierry Mugler Angel for Women that the Amen, um, you know, uh, version was based off of. Jacques Houclier used that Amen for Women as like a springboard to release, or I'm sorry, Angel for Women to release Amen. And he's done a lot of great things. Uh, I really like Olivier Cresp as a perfumer. Uh, and this fragrance was a fragrance that flew under the radar. It got released uh, and there was almost no hype. It was a cheapie. And I think even now that it's discontinued, I think it's still technically a cheapie. Uh, it's called uh, Cheruti 1881 Bella Notte. Okay, so Bella Notte is the flanker. And um, 2014 is the release date. And it's basically this spicy, woody fragrance. Um, I would say if you are a fan of the way that Nathalie Lorson creates fragrances, so if you like that peppery, you know, woody, uh, spicy, there's Sichuan pepper uh, with nutmeg. So, you know, spices to me kind of just keep everything. They put a bow on everything. They keep everything in the circle. 
and they put a bow on everything. And then there's this key lime pie with coriander and juniper, um, with night blooming jasmine, Ce Ceylon cinnamon, black cardamom, cedar, musk, patchouli, and vanilla. And so the thing about this is most um, cheapies, okay, or most modern perfumes, because this is eight years old, have that disgustingly sweet vanilla dry down. This, right when you think it's going to go there, it takes a left turn. It doesn't. It doesn't go sickly sweet. There is vanilla. There is some sweetness, but it's done with a deft hand. And if you wanted to wear, you know, a modern perfume, okay, if you want to wear a modern perfume uh, that smells modern, but doesn't go to that sickly sweet, you know, thing that's so popular nowadays, this is a good compromise. You know, if you like, like I said, it, uh, it reminds me of a Nathalie Lorson. If I closed my eyes and I had no clue Olivier Crest made this, I would think that it's something that Nathalie Lorson created. Um, if you know, if you know, and you are familiar with her work, you'll know she's very fond of that peppery, musky, woody aspect. If you've smelled things like graphite by Montana, which is another cheapie that I think is great. If you smelled Zadig and Voltaire, this is him. She did that as well. You know, that uh, pepperiness in the top and musk in the base with that uh, wood, uh, you know, that wood structure, it's here. Uh, but I think this is a great fragrance. Don't pay hundreds, okay? If you can still find a bottle, I don't know prices though, that's the thing. I think if you can find a bottle, because I got this for like 20 bucks, $22 on discounters or something. It was very cheap for this 100 mil. No one, 125 mil even. No one wanted this back in the day. Now that it's discontinued all of a sudden, you're going to see prices start to rise. Um, I say if you can find a bottle for 60, 80, it's still worth it. 100, mm, you're probably pushing it. 100, 120, uh, the app, I wouldn't pay over 100 for it. Uh, but if you can still find a bottle for 50 or 60, that's that's worth a buy. Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of Atkinson's. And this is a house that gets very little play in my collection and really very little play in, you know, my interest in fragrances. Nowadays, what they make doesn't interest me. But uh, they, they made a fragrance from the early 90s I absolutely love. This is my favorite Atkinson's. This is backup bottle worthy to me, although it's getting very hard to find. But if you ever find a bottle on the cheap, sometimes people don't know what they have, you know, and they'll sell something like this for 30, 50, 70 bucks, get it. Uh, it's called Duke. And surprisingly, the fragrance that this reminds me of, or the fragrance that this kind of takes its cues from, because remember, this is 92. I showed it earlier in the uh, video. It's Boss Spirit. So Boss Spirit came out in um, 1980, um, I want to say 88 or 89. Let me look it up real quick. Boss Spirit, 89. Okay, so it is 89. Boss Spirit has a lot of green notes, tons of green notes. Galbanum, peppermint, tarragon, mugwort aldehydes, it, lavender with this leathery dry down and green herbal patchouli, okay? That's the journey of Boss Spirit, basically. Atkinson's takes that and almost kind of works with it. It makes it more mossy in the dry down. So there is some leather. Um, and the other thing that it does is it makes it... Um, it's added this anise note, okay? So imagine if you took the um, image in my mind is imagine you took a Zara Pour Homme and Boss uh, Spirit and combined them, okay? So there is tobacco here, all right? There's tobacco in Atkinson's Duke. Um, I don't think there's any tobacco in Boss Spirit. If there is, it's negligible. Um, and the other thing that they've added here that makes it, um, just absolutely a stunner to me is they've added the note of spruce and spruce is a note that I've really taken a liking to lately because it's so rarely used. And when it's used, it always stands out. It's different smelling to me than something like pine or balsam fir or something like that. Um, 
and there's very few fragrances that will use a spruce note just at all. I mean, forget doing it well. There's very few fragrances that use it at all. One that I've talked up over and over and oh, there's two that come to mind. Number one is Ted Lapidus Pour Homme from 1978. Not the Ted Lapidus from 87, but Ted Lapidus in the red, you know, um, cap uh, from 1978. There's a beautiful spruce note with leather in there. Uh, and the other one is, um, let's see if I can find it real quick. The other one that uses a spruce note that I am in love with, that I actually want a full bottle of, I think it's full bottle worthy, is this. This is Oriental Velours. I think this is my favorite Lesson Demo Dabla, actually. Oriental Velours is the one I would buy because it has this amazing myrrh spruce combination it's just fuck, so good um definitely full bottle worthy i just i don't want to spend the money because i have these amazing decants um which by the way i've showed this guy's name before where i get these his name is miasto underscore Kel kelsey kelsey i think um but if you search for lesson demo dablas he'll he'll come up you'll see these decants he's very trustworthy um, I've used him many a times. Okay, so Atkinson's does that. It uses the green, so it takes the Artemisia, I mentioned the mugwort, Artemisia, same thing. It takes that mugwort, uh, lavender, uh, green feeling, but it does it a little bit different. So it uses basil instead of tarragon. There's no peppermint, like Boss Spirit has this peppermint vibe. There's no peppermint in Atkinson's. So it just goes about it differently. It's it's not aldehydic. It's more herbal. Um, but it is on a fougere chassis. Okay, so the uh, all the fougere touches are here. You know, smelling this again, there might actually be aldehydes here as well uh, that remind me of Boss Spirit. It, they might go hand in hand. I'd have to wear them again and do a comparison, but they're very close. If you like one, I would recommend trying the other if you never have. Um, and they have this, uh, they have this fougere feel to them. Both of them do. Actually, both of them uh, feel like they're fougere fragrances. Um, you know, they've got that uh, uh, lavender, geranium, uh, you know, oak moss going. Uh, and it, I just think it's an amazing fragrance. Again, z almost zero sweetness. I feel like this is maybe just a touch sweeter than this if you did a comparison, but if you wore it on its own, they're both going to seem very dry, very green, very dry, with a leathery dry down. It's just stunning. Masculine perfumery, how it should be done. What's lost? You know, this is what's lost in masculine perfumery nowadays, and I'm getting a whiff of Antea Sport. Oh my God. Um, you know, that's what, that's what we need to get back to somehow. I mean, there are niche houses that are doing stuff like this, but, um, man. Anyways, yeah, that is, um, Atkinson's by the House of Duke. And that one is not hyped. So the good thing about finding these little, um, you know, vintage fragrances that are not hyped is you could go spend hundreds on eBay, even though my, my buddy, my friend, now I'm going to call him my friend because he was very kind to me sending me this without really, you know, charging me the full price. You can go do that or you can go try to find something like this for 50 or 60 bucks, which is what I got my bottle for years ago. I don't know what they are now, but finding those little deals, that's where you can really maximize your vintage fragrance collection because you want to make your dollars work as hard as they can. And so you could buy this for 200 or this for 50. If you don't own either, I'd say get this for 50. The quality is, you know, both quality quality is no question on many of these vintages I'm going to show you. Some of them like the newer ones from 2014, this is probably the lowest quality. Uh actually there's one other more modern fragrance that might even be lower quality. Um but most of the older fragrances from the 80s or early 90s I'm going to show you, you don't have to worry about quality at all. It's top notch compared to the stuff we get nowadays. Okay, next we're going to talk about a couple of John Varvatos fragrances. And if you've been following my channel, if you watch what I put out, 
Uh, I did a perfumer's portfolio on Rodrigo Flores Rue, and both of these came up. So these two are discontinued. They're from the same line. One is a flanker of another one. So the first one I'm going to show you is called Dark Rebel. So this is a 10 ml decant that I have. I don't have a full bottle, uh, but this is good enough for me. As you can see, I've only spritzed it a couple times, given it one full wear. Um, but Dark Rebel is basically a leathery, spicy fragrance that Rodrigo's, uh, Rodrigo Flores Rue came up with. He's a Gibaudan perfumer. Go watch my video on him if you're interested in learning more about him. But uh, what's interesting about this is it's, it's rum. Uh, with spices and resins, tobacco leaf. There is castorium here, okay? Uh, there's Akigala wood, there's Canary Islands juniper, there's a black leather note. Uh, so it's like leather with spices uh, and booze, the rum. Uh, and there's even this bals fir balsam note that he used in vintage. So if you like the, the greenness of vintage, I think he's improved on it from vintage. I think that green balsam fir or pine or whatever he used in vintage is what's putting me off. Varvados Vintage is a fragrance I struggle with. That came out in 2006. It's probably my um, least favorite from the brand that I own um, because I don't own many full bottles. Uh, and, but I'll tell you what, normally sweet fragrances, like if I see a note of Cuban can sugar cane, which is in here, there's a Cuban sugar cane note in here, and there's a Mexican vanilla note, which I don't know the difference between Mexican vanilla and regular vanilla. Uh, if anyone knows, do let me know. Uh, but basically when I see stuff like that, usually it's a big no-no for me because I don't like sweet fragrances for the most part. Uh, sometimes I'll have guilty pleasures. This, uh, I wouldn't consider a guilty pleasure because it was, I'll, I'll show you a guilty pleasure later in the, in the uh, break, in the show, I'm calling it a show, in the video. Um, but this is done so well that the sweetness doesn't bother me at all because there's so many other things for my nose to, to focus on. You know, it's when the sweetness acts like a Sharpie and just, you know, colors over all the words and you can't make anything out. That's where it bothers me. Um, you can't see the shape that the perfumer is trying to give you because of the sweetness. That doesn't happen here. This is a very well-made fragrance. And I know that um, Rodrigo Flores Rue and Roja Dove are, are big friends. You see the Rojas behind me. Um, if this was in a Roja bottle, people would buy it. You know, he could easily make fragrances like this for his friend Roja. Um because the quality seems way more than, than the, the value for this. I think I paid, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks for this decant maybe. I can't remember exactly, but I'm very glad to have it now that it's discontinued. I wish I would have got a full bottle back in the day because this only came out in 2015. Uh, what ended up happening is the house of John Varvatos went bankrupt. And when they went bankrupt, um, Elizabeth Arden had to sell off the brand to Revlon and Revlon didn't pick up all the fragrances to keep, you know, so I think they kept vintage. They kept the original John Barbados from 2004, um, the ones with the one with dates and oud, uh, but they did not keep this line, this dark rebel line, which is unfortunate because they're some of my favorites from the line. And then the next year, in 2016, he did a flanker. One of, my, definitely my favorite um, John Barbados bottle. Presentation here is stunning. I wish I had a cap because it looks, it looks great with a cap. But um, I do not have a cap. Uh, and it is called John Barbados Dark Rebel Rider. So the rider is the flanker. And look at the look at the jacket, the leather jacket on the bottle. And this does actually zip and unzip. It's a little tough. I don't want to mess with it, but you can take the zipper off uh, and take the bottle out. And uh, it's a it's a little leather jacket they made for the bottle. How cool is that? I think that's amazing, uh, especially for John Barbados, an actual working leather jacket. Um, and it's perfect for the scent because it's spicy, it's leathery. I sprayed it just the other day. Uh, I think I threw it away after two or three days because the um, the um, dry down started to really wane. But um, 
This is an amazing fragrance, and the ingredients used are top-notch. That's why I was mentioning Roja Dove. Actually, this smells more like a Roja Dove than the original Dark Rebel does. Uh, the, the note, the quality of the ingredients here smells unbelievable. Um, and it's a very complex fragrance. They use citron fruit in the opening, which is a very underrated fruit um, uh, citrus ingredient. It smells different from what you're used to smelling. It doesn't smell just like bergamot, you know. It's not the bergamot-lemon combo you're used to smelling. Uh, I notice it from time to time. Maybe it's a little bit more expensive for these brands to use, but I wish more brands would focus on making that citrus opening a little different. And citron fruit always does the trick for me. With bitter orange, uh, aldehyde, saffron, marjoram, hyssop, and then a heart of Florentine iris, which uh, Florentine Iris, I think, is the iris that Dior uses in Dior Homme. Uh, Osmanthus Absolute, Black Violet, Labdenum, beautiful Labdenum here. Somalian Frankincense, beautiful Frankincense. Sumatra Benzoin, Tolu Balsam, Russian Leather, which usually comes with a little bit of smoke because of the birch. And even though there's no birch note listed, there is a touch of smoke, but I think that's coming from the Frankincense. Cacao Absolute, Vanilla, Atlas Cedar, Patchouli, and Woody Notes. One of my favorite um, leathers that's modern, okay? The other one, you know, you'd have to spend huge amounts of money to get something like, um, you know, to get something like uh, Roja's Great Britain. This is a $2,000 perfume, right? And um, this is a, I got this for 33 bucks in an eBay auction a year or two ago. I can't remember, a couple years back. Um, but yes, it's, um, you have to spend a huge amount of money to get a leather fragrance that feels so high quality and so niche, at least to my nose. And I'm curious if um, Revlon decided to nix these because the markup that they were making off of these fragrances were not as much as some of the other ones because this smells very high quality to my nose for whatever reason. Uh, it is discontinued. So Elizabeth Arden is the last ones to produce it. Revlon is not making these at all. And so I don't know what prices are, but I can tell you that if you had to spend bigger money on one of these two, for me, it would be the, the leather version, the, the rider. Uh, but Dark Rebel is still a very good scent. It focuses more on the, you know, booze aspect. This focuses more on the leather. You know I'm a sucker for leather. And so, um, discontinued. It's getting some play on my channel now in, in multiple videos in the last week or so. Okay, next is a fragrance that I have talked about before on the channel, but not on this Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. Uh, in fact... Um, this house has never shown up on this, uh, on this, uh, group of videos yet. I have another one from the house too that could, uh, have potentially made the list, but this is my favorite from the house. The house is called Victor. That's their symbol. Uh, and the fragrance is called Wall Street. How 80s is this presentation? Look at this. So this is the splash. Look at that. So 80s. I absolutely love the boardroom look. You can see the percent. Sorry, the degrees before they used percent. So you know it's an older bottle. Um, and this is a, a backup spray version that I have. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. It is another one very much like Atkinson's that sometimes you can find a bottle. I know for the longest time there was like a bottle for 25 bucks on eBay or something. I don't know if it's still there. I probably should have bought it. Um, if it's still there, someone will get a hell of a deal. But um, this is one of those fragrances that doesn't get the hype on the YouTube community. So no one buys it. You know, these, these just sit there and wait, unfortunately. And it does, it was launched in 84, 1984. Uh, I don't know who the perfumer is, but I know that the idea is a very simplistic one for the eighties and uh, just a winning formula. Lots of green and dry and green notes. 
open, but it's not like Boss Spirit where it goes green and then you think other things are going to happen. It goes more green. No. Uh, this starts out very green, but it starts out sprightly because of juniper and bergamot. And then you get this, and then you get this pine. You get this um, polo green pine needle feel with old school carnation um, that is a little bit spicy, a little bit powdery. There's cinnamon, but what makes this fragrance for me is the leather and the huge amount of oak moss in the base. It has that um, oak moss, you know, uh, when you get a fragrance with a lot of oak moss to me, it gives you this nose tickle, you know, like it almost tickles your nose. Like, like you can feel the presence of oak moss in the fragrance. It gives it that weight. It's here. Uh, and it literally smells like you're sitting in a boardroom. Like you're sitting in a high-class boardroom with a mahogany desk. You know, a, 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 a strong, sturdy desk that was made 180 years ago and has been passed down from generation to generation. That kind of feel. Uh, and, you know, maybe the, the, the people that you're sitting in the boardroom with are wearing like old school vintage pine fragrances. You get the wood, you get the desk. And I just, for some reason, I think of, you know, big old telephones that you would, you know, car phones like from the eighties that always pops in my mind when I wear this. Um, but I absolutely love it. And I think that it is so underrated. Um, these two value for money. These two are the best vintage value for money from this list so far. Uh, you can still, like I said, this one is still very cheap, uh, but it might be cheap for a long time. The stock on Atkinson's and Wall Street are probably nowhere near as um, available as Animal Animal. Because if, if uh, Parfumo is right, this just got discontinued. This has been discontinued for 20 years. No one cares. You know what I mean? So, and, and me doing this video probably won't change anything. But... For those of you in the know, um, I would say if you want to start a vintage collection and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is a great place to start. This will get, this will get your nose accustomed to smelling vintage perfume um, and you won't break the bank. You know what I mean? Okay, next we are going to talk about a high class niche Roja Dove. Uh, I've got my list here that we've talked about on previous episodes. So we've talked about four Roja fragrances that are discontinued. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Majestic Oud, which I did a full review on, Oligarch EDP, which they discontinued the EDP and went to the X-Ray, and Roja's Eau the Exclusive Parfum, which shocked me because I thought it smelled a little bit like um, Frederick Mall's The Moon, which usually it's the other way around, that uh, the... Um, Frederick Mall is the one that, that usually comes out first, and then the Roja maybe smells like it. Here, it's the opposite way. Roja actually came out in 2016, discontinued it, and then in 2019, Frederick Mall put out the moon. And they do have some similarities. Um, that's why I said my theory is that maybe Julian Rascone is the perfumer. But this one, they did something very similar to what they did with Oligarch. They discontinued the Eau de Parfum, which is what this is. This is Reckless Eau de Parfum. Uh, so they discontinued the Eau de Parfum, and they put it out in an X-ray version. I think it's still available in an X-ray version. Let me see. Let me just take a look. Roja, Roja Parfums. Let's see what the uh, what the verdict is on the X-ray version of Reckless. Reckless Pour Homme. Roja wants to give you notifications. No. Uh, Reckless Pour Homme. Yes. Okay. So they put it out in an X-ray. It's 375 pounds now for 50 ml, which is like $500, like 480 bucks or something. Crazy. Do not pay that. Now, to be fair, I've never smelled the X-ray version of this. It says, extraordinary awaits. A pure cedarwood scented spice bomb chifra. Reckless brings the heat of fire of five lively spices to the natural warmth of a woody base. Ginger, cinnamon, and clove build around prominent notes of cardamom and black pepper to create a profoundly yet perfectly balanced 
spicy opening, the impact of which is further lifted by the aromatic qualities of lavender, artemisia, and bay. This striking first impression never loses its punch. This one does lose its punch. Uh, as it settles into a natural bed of woods and mosses to create an inherently masculine composition. I'll agree with the last sentence, but uh, if you've ever smelled Clive Christian's X for Men, this is almost an exact clone of X. Copy. Uh, it's a copy of X for Men. And I prefer X for Men. It lasts longer. I enjoy the way that the use of the cinnamon... Uh, is done in X for Men better. Um, and it just actually, I think it smells more high class. I think this smells lower quality. And I think it smells, um, at least the Eau de Parfum. It doesn't last on my skin at all. It's something where I need to reapply it every two, three, four hours tops. You know, unfortunately, uh, it, it just doesn't last. And so for me, this is one of the biggest flops that I've discovered from the House of Roja. And I think I did a review on this already because I've worn this a couple times uh, and I think I did a review. And um, uh, not a fan, okay? So uh, not a fan of this fragrance. If, if what they did with Oligarch is any inclination where they put it in the X-ray form, um, this might be one to skip. I would go for, I would sample Clive Christian X first actually. So, um, Reckless Eau de Parfum is discontinued, and that's the version that we're, we're adding to the, to the list here. Uh, there is a nice spicy aspect with the clove and cinnamon, and, you know, yes, there's a nice little bay leaf touch and stuff like that, but it's just, it's not enough, you know, it needs... It needs something else. It is, and it's, and the fact that it came out in 2014, and it's so close to X for Men, which came out like turn of the century, 2001, doesn't sit well with me. Um, okay, next let's go to the house of Thierry Mugler, and this is officially discontinued now, according to um, Parfumo.net. Unfortunately, this is discontinued. I'm going to show you the older version anyways, and tell you to get this version, but. Um, any version now, even the new one that only says Mugler, is discontinued. And this is Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan. So again, the version that you want is the one that says Thierry Mugler right here. According to me, this is what I'm going to tell you, okay? Get the version that says... Come on, baby, focus. There we go. Get the version that says Thierry Mugler right there. So Thierry Mugler is what you want. If you go for the version that says Amen only, it's going to be weaker. It's going to be not as deep. It's weaker. Uh, this is basically this honeyed tobacco, cherry vibe with cacao, patchouli, ambergris, labdanum, and styrax. And uh, one of my favorite sweet tobacco scents. Usually I don't like sweet fragrances again. I absolutely love this. Uh, I have a decant of Naxos. I'll talk about that. Uh, but Naxos, I mean, they've added some things like lavender and stuff, but it's just, I like the Thierry. I like Pure Havan. Um, so I probably would, I, I wouldn't go for a full bottle, but I'll do a video on it since I have a decant. And then staying with the house of Thierry Mugler, um, by the way, uh, Pure Havan came out uh, 11 years ago in 2011, and um, the next one is is uh, from the house of Thierry Mugler, and it's called B Men, and this is a little 10 ml decant. These are both of these I showed you today are brand official decants. I like the brand official stuff. Uh, so Thierry Mugler's B Men, um, Christine Nagel and Jacques Houclier came out with this. And B-Men is um, rhubarb fruits with that patchouli um, that you know and are so familiar with, but it's very turned down. The patchouli in this, I feel like, is, you know, whereas with the Amen stuff, the patchouli is like the center of attention uh, in Amen. Um, and then, of course, they've taken that DNA and each, each flanker has its own little thing, right? Here... It's not about the patchouli. It's about the rhubarb, the, the fruitiness, the spices, 
There's a sequoia note, which is very strange. You hardly ever see sequoia uh, in a perfume. And um, amber and vetiver. And if you've ever smelled, um, if you've ever smelled Yoji Om, I've talked about that fragrance many a times on the channel. Uh, I think it even made my Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. No, I don't think it did. Um, not yet, but it will. I'll do a video on it. Um, those two, to me, are very similar. Uh, I think this has maybe a slight touch of anise in the opening, too. Just a bit. Um, but one of the best rhubarb fragrances I've ever smelled. And probably one of the most underrated Thierry Mugler fragrances, to be honest with you. Um, for whatever reason, this does not get the love anymore. No one talks about B men. You can still find bottles even for a hundred bucks sometimes. I've seen it happen. So, you know, if you're kind of a value investor in the fragrance world, B men is one to kind of put on your watch list. Okay, next we're going to go to a Paco Rabanne. I've got back to back Paco Rabans. One of them uh, is supposed to be very close to Thierry Mugler's Ultra Zest, which comes in the orange bottle, and it's damn near impossible to find. Uh, it's supposed to have this, like, blood orange, um, you know, with that Amen DNA, the patchouli, the cinnamon, the pepper, uh, the coffee. But it's got that zesty fruit, um, zesty uh, citrus with mint opening. It's supposed to be very invigorating, ultra zest. It's discontinued. I saw a bottle on eBay for $700. I swear to God. I was like, this guy's out of his mind. But I've said that before, and people pay it. But don't pay huge money for Ultra Zest because this is out there. And I got this for very cheap. Um, I think somewhere in the 20, 20s, 25 28 $30 range. Uh, this is called uh, Paco Rabanne Ultra Red Man. So one of the craziest bottles you'll ever see. Sorry about the fingerprint magnet. Um, but it, it almost works like one of those industrial staplers. So you squeeze it right here and the, and the spray comes out right there. Um, but this came out in 2008. And so it actually came out, um, years before Ultra Zest. Uh, Ultra Zest was a Jacques Houclier and Quinton Biche creation. And, um, Ultra Red is a Daphne Bugey uh, creation. So this is blood orange with praline. Yes, I know. Praline is a note I've absolutely shit all over on masculine perfumes. I don't think it belongs anywhere in masculine perfumes, to be honest with you. In fact, praline probably doesn't belong in any perfume. However, there are two fragrances that use the praline note that they're both sweet, but I can stand them both. They're not, uh, they're, they're guilty pleasures for me. Um, one is a flanker of Abbey Rouge. It's called Dress Code by Guerlain. There's a praline note in there. Uh, and the other one is this, Ultra Red Man. This is a, um, guilty pleasure for me because it does have that blood orange. It does have the praline. Uh, it's got the tonka, which is sweet. It smells like modern tonka here. Uh, and unfortunately, it's discontinued because if you want a sweet fragrance, I mean, I'd rather wear this than than one million. Let's put it that way. If I'm if you're going to force me to wear a sweet fragrance, I'll wear this, you know, over one million for sure. Um, absolutely. Um, for 20 or 30 bucks. Yes. Don't pay hundreds for this, though. People are trying to, you know, take advantage of the fact it's discontinued. It's not worth hundreds. Um, but it, it is worth 20 or 30 bucks for sure. And, um, the bottle's kind of cool. Okay. By the way, they also have a, um, ultraviolet man, I think it's called. And that's one where if I can find that one for 20 or 30 bucks, I'll probably get it just to, just to have it. Um, I think ultraviolet man, um, came out in 2001, and then this one came out in 2008. Ultraviolet Man is more about the um, mint patchouli. Uh, you know, it's got that mint patchouli combo, whereas this has that blood orange patchouli praline. 
and ultra ultraviolet man has this uh, mint pepper ambergris moss patchouli thing both of them are very um synthetic you know you're it's almost like you're smelling a it's almost like you're smelling a computer generated idea of what a fragrance would smell like if that makes sense but 2001 was ultraviolet man 2008 was this one it's it's not anywhere near as bad as their new computer generated fragrance which is um uh phantom so paco Rabanne was already starting to go down that route even decades ago uh here i think they actually did a decent enough job it's good enough where i'm showing it on the video and saying if you find a bottle for cheap you know it might be worth grabbing okay next we're gonna go to probably um one of my favorite discontinued floral masculine fragrances of all time. I have a 200 ml giant backup bottle of this. I'm going to show you the baby bottle because it's easier than trying to get the big boy out under lock and armed guard and all that stuff. Um, and this is Paco Rabanne's Tenade. Now, Tenade is uh, an 80s floral through and through. In fact, it's created by Pierre Wargnay. I did a perfumer's portfolio video on him. Uh, if you want to see what he's created, and there's some doozies in there, check them out. If you've ever smelled Boss Number One, okay? If you've ever smelled Boss Number One, you will get hints. You'll get reminded of Boss Number One with Tenere, okay? Now, Tenere goes in a, in a different direction, but it has a slight reminder of boss number one because of the honey the way that Pierre Wargnay uses honey here is reminiscent of boss number one in fact I'd go so far as to say if you like boss number one this is worth a sniff okay uh, they're completely different fragrances this is more about uh, the florals big floral big big floral uh, the jasmine the carnation the Lily of the Valley is definitely here, but um, he's used this pissy floral vibe, if you will. Um, he's used this pissy floral vibe, uh, and you get the pissy opening of Boss Number One, too. So they're completely different fragrances, but there are bits and pieces, you know where you can look and say, okay, I can kind of see what he did with the top and the mid, and, you know, they're they're different. Um, but uh, if you like the way Pierre Wargnay did Boss Number 1, which I do, I think it's in a, it's top 10 for me, my favorite honey fragrance by far, um, then you should smell Tenere. The florals will probably put you off, uh, especially because they are very animalic. Uh, they're very 80s animalic. Uh, I love it. I think it's I think it's one of the best masculine florals ever created. If that's if the if that's even a thing, if masculine florals are a thing, uh, you know, uh, Akitos came out around the same time in the late '80s, mid to late '80s, and it also is kind of like that masculine floral thing. But Tenere, um, this is one. So it's not as cheap as something like Wall Street. It's not as cheap as something like Atkinson's, at least, you know, when I was able to find bottles. Who knows what the prices are now? Prices of fragrances are insane. But um, I think I scored this Tenere bottle for like this 25 mil for like a dollar a mil. It was like 25 bucks or something. And I think I got the 200 mil for like 120. You know, it, it was a very good deal. Um, and I uh, don't know what prices are, but... I think this is another one where it's not like vintage Antaeus, it's not like vintage Koros or Bellamy or even this. Boss Spirit, for some reason, is expensive as hell online. It's not like some of these vintages where prices skyrocket. It's not like Patu Porom. You can still find decent deals on this. And um, the construction of this, one of the reasons that I loved vintage fragrances so much when I initially started is number one, uh, they gave me a glimpse into the past, into what perfumers were doing back in the day. But number two, I felt the quality and time and the ratio, the value for money was better than any niche fragrance I could buy. This $25 bottle for 25 mils, and you can see, I mean, I've had this for years and it's 
not even half empty, the, the baby bottle, forget the big boy bottle. Um, and, you know, it, you get this amazing uh, artistic creation and they did it in a way where I really felt like I was getting so much for my money. Uh, and it almost felt like I was, you know, smelling fragrances from a completely different world. Uh, that's how different the 80s were compared to the crap that they're putting out nowadays. And so, uh, if you find these good little deals on these old fragrances, even if you don't know about it, if you're, if you're like me and you have some risk tolerance, take a chance. You know, if you get a good deal, uh, and it's a vintage discontinued fragrance, take a chance. You know, something like this, 25, 30 bucks, no brainer. If you don't like it, so what? You can sell it and get your money back easily. Um, and finally, the final fragrance, and it's another one that we talked about on the live stream. I actually unboxed it on the live stream with Rich Mitch. So if you didn't watch the live stream, you may not even know I had this. Um, but it is a Tom Ford, and it came out in 2013. Olivia Guillotine is the perfumer. Uh, and I'm so happy to have this because uh, it says the production was apparently discontinued, which really makes me sad because it's one of the best private blends, I think, out there, uh, along with Vert de Ensance, which is also discontinued. That is the only Tom Ford I've highlighted in this list. There's another one that'll be highlighted next time, uh, but so far, Vert de Ensance is the only one I've highlighted, and now we're going to talk about Tobacco Oud. So this is a 2014 bottle, A24, 2014 bottles. So this is an older bottle, eight years old. And my God, it is so good. Um, this is Tom Ford at its best. You know, Tuscan leather and this, uh, even Oudwood, which people shit all over Oudwood. I like it. I mean, I know it's not the, the real Oud. You know, it's not Bortnikoff Oud or Rizodori Oud. I know what it is. I know it's a synthetic creation uh, where they use that fake Oud by the bucket load everyone else uses. But even here, um, they're using that fake Oud. But I still really like it. I love the uh, invention. Uh, I love the uh, way that the tobacco mixes with the patchouli. Patchouli is an easy sell for me normally. Patchouli and leather are usually very easy sells for me. Uh, and it's woody, it's got that sandalwood, it's got the spiciness, and it has this liqueur note. The fragrance almost feels like you're taking the tobacco and oud and just dipping it in a liqueur, uh, like a whiskey. And it's just... Oh, this is going to get a lot of wear. This is going to get a lot of wear this winter for me, and I'm so happy to have this. This is the 100 mil. I got a decent deal on it. I did pay some money, but I didn't get, you know, um, I didn't get shafted on the price, uh, which I, I'm starting to see some prices really go up. So Tobacco Oud is, um, I had a decant of this. I think my decant is from a newer batch because when I compare this with the decant, this is even stronger, if that, if that's even possible. This is so strong. Um, it lasts forever. It's just fantastic modern perfumery. That's what Tom Ford used to be known for. Amazing, unique, modern perfumery. That's what made uh, Tuscan leather so great. You know, is um, it was just such a, a unique take. Oh, God. I mean, I love... When Tom Ford did it right, there were very few people who could... Um, you know, who could, who could compete with what he was putting out. And now, I don't know where the house is going to go, to be honest with you. I am uh, very concerned for the house of Tom Ford. Let's put it that way. I'm extremely concerned about where the house is going to go. Um, it just doesn't seem like they have a future. You know, it, it doesn't seem like they're creating fragrances for Fragcom. They're not creating fragrances for you and me. You know, they're creating fragrances. When I say Fragcom, I mean the people who love fragrances. They're creating fragrances now more for the masses. Lost Cherry and uh, even some of the stuff they put out just a year or two ago, they're discontinuing. Lavender Extreme, discontinued. Um, it's, it's, 
I don't know where the brand's going to go. I don't know what Estee Lauder is going to do with the house. Um, I think things like effing fabulous and all that stuff, um, while they may appeal to a certain clientele out there, for the frag heads, for the people that don't buy based on hype or name, you know, if you don't, if, if you buy this because it says Tom Ford, you'll buy whatever crap they put out. It doesn't matter. But if you actually listen to your nose and you let your nose lead the way and pick, you know, what is going to, um, what you're going to purchase based on, on this, Tom Ford is, um, Unfortunately, Tom Ford is another house like Creed and like, um, uh, you know, these niche houses, um, MFK, where all of their best stuff was in the past, you know, uh, the modern stuff that, that Creed is putting out, I wouldn't buy. I mean, it's, it's unfortunately, but so many niche houses now. Even brands like L'Artisan, it's the vintage bottles that you want. Um, the new L'Artisans, the you know the the stuff that they're doing, whatever they call it, the the kitchen collection, or you know they're using bell peppers. I'm not that doesn't interest me at all. And so these niche houses, I think, are in trouble. Uh, Amouage is another one. I won't buy new Amouages. All my Amouages are the old ones, and. Um, if I'm going to buy an Amouage, it's going to be an old Amouage. I'm, I'm not interested in the new stuff these niche houses are coming out with. And unfortunately, Tom Ford falls into that category now. So I'm very happy to have Tobacco Oud um, because I think it's one of the best. I think it's one of the best Tom Fords that, 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 uh, that they put out. And it's an absolute travesty that it's being discontinued. So grab a bottle while you can, if you're interested in that. Prices are still decent. Um, and let me know what you think of this list. If there are some fragrances that you have got a chance to sniff from this list, if you have experience with them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'd love to see your faces in the comments. Everyone that leaves a like, a subscription, a comment is always greatly appreciated. Uh, I really do appreciate every single one of you that has supported me so far. Uh, I, um, coming up this winter will be basically the one year anniversary. We're over 1800 subscribers, which is more than I ever thought I would have in such a quick amount of time, not even a year. And, um, you know, it's, it's sharing of the knowledge, sharing of the fragrances. You have no idea how many times I'll, I'll get a comment from somebody and it will be like a recommendation on a fragrance to smell or samples, you know, people will send me stuff, uh, like, like the guy that I was talking about today, very kind of him to send me this free bottle. He didn't have to do that. Those are the kind of people that have made this so much fun for me and, and not just so much fun because of their kindness, but because it allows me to experience other fragrances. I never would be able to experience, um, uh, what was this? Uh, I'm terrible about remembering names, but I'd never be able to experience this Beaufort fragrance, um, ever. You know, it's, um, it's a brand that I wouldn't just go blind by, and yet, thanks to his kindness, I'm going to be able to do a video on it and talk about it. And so, Iron Duke, sorry, Iron Duke. And so, you know, um, the sharing and the learning is, is unbelievable. And what's funny is on Iron Duke, they're comparing it to Amouage's Royal Tobacco, the new one. Uh, and this, so this came out um, 2017. So yes, I have a decant of that Royal Tobacco coming. So I will, I'm not going to buy a bottle. I used to blind buy every Amouage. Basically when it came out, I'd blind buy it. Uh, and I'm not doing that anymore. I am being much more selective. And, um, but I do want to talk about it on the channel because people are clamoring for it. So I bought a decant. Um, but people say that Iron Duke is, is close to that. So anyways, this video is over an hour now, an hour and 10 minutes. I appreciate everybody's time today. Um, these videos will continue as long as I have discontinued fragrances or versions, you know, like this, um, Thierry Mugler. If the, if the Amen uh, Pure Havan wasn't discontinued, 
Like I thought you could still buy it in the Mugler version, but apparently the whole thing is discontinued now. I still would include it and say, you know, get the Thierry Mugler version. So if there's a version of a fragrance I want you to go for, I'll include them in this video. Um, or if it's outright discontinued. So as long as I still have those type of fragrances that I want to show you guys to look for, um, as long as I have more discontinued fragrances that are not in this series, I'll continue doing these. So cheers, guys. I appreciate everyone's uh, time and, you know, concern. And I appreciate everyone's participation and attention. And cheers, guys. Have a good evening. Bye now.